<laughs> You're recording me. <laughs> yeah, why? Well, right. Welcome to Talking Points. So the aim of the game in this is we're each giving a presentation and one of the other guys is going to choose all the photos that come up and you just got to oh. make it work. It's like a blind TED talk. We've never done this before, by Create the way. three so titles. So do we make the titles We now? might mess we up. We make the titles of the presentation. All oh, right, there's, it's like fill in the blank. What kind of things are you guys putting? <laughs> <laughs> because... Oh, we'll see. Zach, can you get out of the way so everyone can see our faces? <laughs> Is thought cat. Pick which one you're doing. I've got two ones that say Jordan in them. <laughs> <laughs> this is maybe the best combination we could have started with. Oh, let's go. So, Jordan's giving a talk and Peter chooses the images that come up. Oh, okay. Oh, God. Hello. Do I just read this? Yeah. Your time's running out for this oh, slide. You better hurry up. It's not you. It's Jordan. <laughs> I'm here to talk about that. Every time you look out your window and you think... <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Don't think it's you. It's me. Why is Jordan first? <laughs> Should we be afraid of Jordan? No, because... <laughs> the thing is, 100% of all eggs are from chickens. And no. What does the future look like for Jordan? Fin what does the future look like for Jordan? Yeah, let's repeat it again. <laughs> One more time. It looks like this. With <laughs> eggs. The future looks like it's got a lot of chickens in store. <laughs> because um, after the nuclear war probably happens, you have to get your own protein. So we'll have chickens. <laughs> Thank you. I can hear All the right. buzzing of the computer. <laughs> the silence is deafening in the room. We have something to do with the hands, Zach. We have like arrows. Oh, okay. See, like you can move your hand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know what that does. Oh, I think it's a cheer meter. <laughs> Engagement score. Oh, I was see, nodding. I started. Hog hog. Wait, so oh, let's go. go. Hello, my name is Big Hog Hog. And my talk is how I, uh, sorry, I found home in a colony of fire ants. <laughs> So what you need to do if you're going to find a fire, uh, colony of fire ants is to pour what looks to be oil down into the colony, throw a match down there, and all the ants will turn into fire ants, which kind of makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Smart. Which is what this picture is demonstrating, how I kind of got started with the whole thing and created the fire ants. No one can stop me. No one except maybe <laughs> me a cat, a common predator of the fire ants. Still not really getting to how I uh, called it home, but meerkats are almost one of the biggest enemies of the fire ant. Uh, obviously consuming upwards of 1,000 fire ants per year. Wow, stats. Per meerkat capita. Which adds up to be over a million ants per uh, ant second. <laughs> <laughs> Math. Uh, there is only one thing we can do to preserve... Jackson, you're going off screen, by the way. No, sideways, dickhead. I don't want to cover the thing. Here we go. It's fine. And that is eating nuts. Nuts are actually commonly hunted by the fire ants, and it was one of the most important lessons that I took out of the whole situation. Because nuts are quite easy for an ant to grab and pull, particularly fire ants, as they can drag them long distances, upwards of 1,000 kilometers per hectare. You can't go any lower, Jordan. What? Bored? So huh? ants on your nuts. Why are you bored? What do you mean? Um, you yeah, ants on your nuts, you'll get a fiery surprise. Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh shit! I was doing well. Which one was mine? Oh! Mine was red. I think Jordan was purple. All right, I'm up with Cog. Oh, I just stood up too quick. I'm lightheaded as fuck. Oh, don't fall. Hello! My name is Thoughtcat, and my talk today is going to be on the really interesting topic of... Why SpongeBob SquarePants is the greatest work of art of our time. Yes. Now, I'll just be starting you guys off with a bit of a background on his, uh, the history of SpongeBob. And so I'll just be leading you guys to my first slide. SpongeBob was actually written by someone's dog when it actually jumped up on their lap. And instead of, you know, causing a ruckus, you know, shitting on them, licking them, biting them, it actually fell onto the keyboard. And then the first script of SpongeBob was created. The show does have a bit of a, you know, a history of making absolutely no sense. Which makes perfect sense when you consider that it was butt rolled by a dog, you know? Like when people say face rolled, they slam their head in the keyboard. Except it was uh, by a dog. It actually contains a lot of messages, specifically for dogs. 
Prepare yourself for the beauty that I'm about to show you, which is contained in Spongebob. So, this is one of the great metaphors of Spongebob coming up on my next slide, which is just going to be one of the most beautiful things. So, Spongebob starting in the lower <laughs> class as a fry cook, you know what I mean? He has to climb the corporate ladder, or mm. as I call it, the corporate staircase. Meanwhile, he's trying to carry as the people in his life along. Squidward. Pain in my ass. He's got no. He's got no appreciation for anyone. He's a mean neighbor. He doesn't work hard. He's lazy. Patrick. He's stupid. He's just having to like pull him into these terrible adventures. They are the metaphorical elephants on SpongeBob's back in this situation while they're trying to make it to the top. What this tells us about the future of culture is that. Uh, well, we'll see in just a second what it actually tells us. It all makes sense when you see my final slide for today. So, what SpongeBob tells us about the future of society <laughs> is that we don't like people with buck teeth. They're stuck on the bottom of the corporate ladder. They've got all these metaphorical elephants on their back. They're stuck down there, and we just don't give them a fair go because they have buck teeth. The answer? Get a plate. It just encourages everyone to care about their dental hygiene, maybe get some braces, get a plate, maybe just a simple retainer, anything, and you too will make it up the corporate ladder. Thank you. What do you actually think of SpongeBob? Oh, I've like never watched it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. It's unfortunate this whole video is getting deleted though. <laughs> Oh, assisted by Jordan. Why are you? <laughs> Hello, my name is Big Sack Zach. That's an upvote. And my talk... <laughs> yeah, same. Program. Nothing personal, but here's a harsh truth about your religion. So, this is going out to anyone <laughs> that is Christian. <laughs> Pick one of the big ones. Here's the harsh truth. Five people are happy, but look in the background. Brightness, it looks like the heavenly gates. Everyone's in heaven. But then you see the cityscape, the real world. No one's in heaven. This is fucked. Down that? in the real world, society. The following is a commonly. Why don't you choose Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really believe The following it. is a commonly believed myth. <laughs> Why do I need God to feel good when I have grapefruits? <laughs> and we've all seen the grapefruit technique. Some would compare that to being in heaven. I myself would. Feels great. Can this shit go any higher? Oh, we can. It feels great, fruit. <laughs> so, what's next? You're thinking, the chart. what are we going to do with the churches? Are we going to turn them into grapefruit farms or what? Well, I'll tell you what's next. <laughs> what's next? <laughs> you know how to make any sensation better? Remove one of your senses. That is where I bring you the cardboard box. No sight, no sound, no smell. You might have thought the grapefruit technique could not get any better, but we inhibit some of the senses and look how much the wife is enjoying it. But what she did you is. Mean? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was nice. the best one. That was good. Oh. Yeah, just had to bash religion. <laughs> I'm yep. so Points red, dude. Oh, fuck. I love oh! it. No one knew how to score for Woo! yours. Yeah, we didn't know how the score yeah. works. <laughs> oh, hang on, there's awards. The what? Oh, hang on. So the points really don't matter at all. What does that mean? No, I just typed random things. Why, Why did you do that? <laughs> I, I, I guess this is your job and I'd fire you if I could. <laughs> Grapefruit award, thank you. <laughs> that you give that to yourself. No, I gave it to him. Oh, right, the old answer award, that's for Jordan. <laughs> Wait, is everyone just getting one award? <laughs> then why did he go first? <laughs> Two awards! Hey! Jordan, you might win, mate! Jordan, you might win! I didn't get any awards. <laughs> oh! oh yeah! <laughs> he got the All Good Sounds Award and the Why Did He Go First yeah, Award. Fair enough. Oh, he earned it. One. It was a tough I one. wish I got the Jiggers from the 909 <laughs> Award. <laughs> this is not okay. What have you got? What? Oh, uh, yeah, you got a couple of mine, the I think. The second one is not okay. What's your I'm gonna pick it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got the JFM 305 S9. That's not I'm I your want. assistant. Get Wait. up there, Peter. Oh, okay, okay. I was... My name is Dog Cat, and today my talk is going to be upon the topic of that I believe that starving children is a modern day miracle. Ooh. It's very underrated, and I'm here to try to like fix that up in your guys' brains, okay? And now, <laughs> we all know that fossil fuels are leading to our demise. What makes, what increases fossil fuel usage? Like this man, he's a fossil in a car. People! The more people, you know, and children become adults, adults drive. So he's got to nip this in the bud, let the children starve, and therefore we are no longer going to have any more carbon emissions coming out. 
global oil prices saved, no need for renewables, nothing like that. So that is a first great point. Here is an interesting thing. Sorry. <laughs> Kids, bold colors, it's tacky. And honestly, any kid directed thing, trust me, I used to work at a trampoline park, the decor is disgusting. Starving children, not enough energy to go to trampoline parks, and we can start gearing it towards adults, the way it's really meant to be. And uh, there we go, modern, modern, modern miracle, lucky us. I'm now calling for us to give to you humanity's greatest resource in the fight against uh, satiated children. <laughs> <laughs> and that's modern art. You yeah. can be full intellectually if you just look at modern art it's kind of abstract no need for food when you have food for thought you know what i mean oh yeah oh, yeah that's max so i'm just thinking take them to the art gallery instead of in, uh, having food banks and you know farms we have modern art galleries in developing countries to really up the numbers of our starving children thank you I forgot about the thing at the beginning. Oh, well, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, that's right. The the award. Oh my god! Oh yeah. my, off the chart. The hog in the sack. Oh, assisted by. Me. Did I assist your last one? I think uh, I did. did you? About ants. Come on, was that you? Man, yeah, I did that. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Hello, my name is Big. Oh, sorry, Blast. My nefarious plan has been foiled, all because of those meddling kids. <laughs> Now, what's interesting about this kid on screen is that he's really wired up to what seems to be a puppet. Obviously not got a lot of brain power, and that's sort of what we think about kids in the modern age. Thanks to this speaker before, we know that they can be quite stupid and dim-witted. As is this kid, who's sort of wired up to what is a puppet, I have decided. What does it say about the nefarious plan and why I've been foiled? It says that I'm also not very clever, so let's see what happens next. Drats. The worst part was what happened next. And it's almost a lot to show you, so I'm just gonna wait three seconds and then show you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the worst part is when all, all the kids that I was speaking about before passed, because <laughs> they were cool. starving, as Peter pointed out. It, it, the, it really caught up to them, because a the lack of food can really catch up with bodies of the small spirit, such as kids. And that's what you can see here. Not one, not two, but thousands upon thousands of dead, starved <laughs> children. Uh, which is not great. But don't underestimate me. <laughs> Do you want to prepare for what my next plan is? Because I need to get those kids back, and this is how I'm going to get them back. Because the kids don't get away with nothing if there's no toilet paper. Because I TP'd every one of their goddamn houses, even though there were grieving parents inside. <laughs> It was no remorse from me. I said, see you later to the kids and TP'd the house. And then I pissed on it. I really did. <laughs> so it's drenched in yellow sopping toilet paper. And that is really what I think about the kids who really killed me at the end there. And I'm glad to see that people are enjoying starving kids, TP and urination. You can also just move on. Oh, Jordan's up. Oh, the controls. bloody goes first to in the awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. This guy's awesome. Oh. Wow. I love this guy's work. Hello, my name is Big Rod Ridley, and my talk is, instead of giving in to despair, give in to bending over. <laughs> if you're depressed and you're not feeling good, <laughs> <laughs> like this little uh, balloon, Sometimes you just need a big bang to end it all, like this cactus. Although it would end the dog's life, it would be an exciting way to go out. Yep. <laughs> Eureka! I shouted when I saw this dog getting pegged by a cactus. Oh, when I saw this. Because <laughs> I thought, you know what? Let's keep things getting spicier. Not only should you be getting bent over, you should have octopuses in amongst it as well you know tentacles and that we all know how how that Do goes we? Explain the, old, the old tentacles holding you down <laughs> it was funny though <laughs> it was funny though when i was experimenting with all this stuff because i don't want to come to you guys with stuff that i haven't experimented with and while i was doing it you won't believe who showed up <laughs> this guy and his massive co how was that? What happened? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you skip them on your phone? Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's what Jax was saying. Guys, you will never guess what my fucking speech topic is. I Hello, guess. everyone. 
My name is Big Sack Zack. You might have remembered me from my anti-Christianity speech a little while oh, back. Oh no, what's this? <laughs> Talking about a bit of grapefruit, but look, this looks really bad. But I have a good reason for why I'm horny in church. Oh, I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. I'm, I'm up. up. I'm all the way up. I'm all the way. What? <laughs> you can't spell grapefruit without goat and adding an O. And we all want an O when we do it. Sometimes with a goat, sometimes with a grapefruit, <laughs> but almost never in church. And I find that a bit of a struggle sometimes. And that's why I get a bit horny in church, because I'm horny everywhere else. So when I go to church, I can't tone it down. And here's a tasty little fact. Not as tasty as a grapefruit. Now, we've talked about the front. Let's talk about Jordan. The back. The back. <laughs> <laughs> Look who now, showed up. Grapefruit is phenomenal for going in. But two, two fruit, where's the five veg? Cucumbers. In the ass. Let's move on. As if that wasn't enough to blow your mind, chew on this. Not the grapefruit or the cucumber, I'm using them. But you can chew on this next fact. Sausages. Now we thought we had reached the limit of where food and sex can come together. But here we go. God. Floppy. Is this getting released or what? Like, um, thanks. I think your score might be quite high though. Yeah. I think it's worth I get a lot of points. Holy shit. Oh, Clean sweet. <laughs> it's me. Question my sexuality award. <laughs> Big Rod Ridley! No! Oh my god. No. Jackson, I'm fucking oh, no. no. up. Jordan. <laughs> Jordan Clean Sweep with the awards. Oh, hey. I respect. I have to give out that award. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it's not better award. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan's gonna win fucking oh, again. God. Oh, oh thank my you, boys. God. Thank wow. you. Well done, Jordan, Jordan, get up here. Thank you. I'll take a speech, while. Speech, John! Give us a speech! Thank you, thank you, thank you. As the best speech maker in the underdogs. That yeah. was my speech, just saying thank you. Oh, um, wow, he's yeah, good. This video gets 20,000 likes, we still won't do it again. <laughs> <laughs>